Welcome to the SFOM channel and uh, thanks for tuning in. First, uh, let me start out by saying that I hope you are healthy and that you will stay healthy during this coronavirus pandemic. Very strange situation where we are in and I hope that everybody will be fine. Um, but we do have some clear skies in the Netherlands for the first time in four months. So I wanted to take the opportunity to do uh, two things basically. So I wanted to share uh, my attempt to capture Venus with you. So tonight uh, Venus will be at its greatest eastern elongation in the night sky. Um, and secondly, I also wanted to capture my first galaxy of the season during this night. So I, want, I was planning on capturing the Whirlpool Galaxy M51. I will be using my wide field setup. So uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. You're looking at a live uh, view of a Venus here through my, uh, my refractor telescope. And I just wanted to share some of the details, uh, especially for those of you who are just starting out uh, doing astrophotography. Yeah, keep in mind that with a small refractor as I have, so this is an 18 millimeter refractor um, with a 480 millimeter focal length, so an F6 refractor. With that F6 refractor, I get this in my field of view. So keep in mind that Venus is a very tiny target as it uh, will appear like this in your field of view. And of course we can do a digital zoom and then it will look a little bit like this. Uh, we see that the apparent diameter of Venus is only about 21 arc seconds in the night sky. And this target uh, is uh, currently at a distance of 115 million kilometers uh, from Earth. And actually it's pretty close right now. So this is one of the best views you can have uh, of Venus, uh, at least in 2020, this year. I'm able to get uh, about one arc second per pixel in my field of view. And uh, yeah, it, it looks then like this. <laughs> um, so what I want to say is on one arc second, it basically means that uh, you just saw that uh, Stellarium showed that we have about uh, 21 arc seconds of apparent diameter. So I have about 21 pixels in diameter of Venus. And when we look at Venus, maybe zoom in all the way at 800% uh, here. So I'm digitally uh, zoomed in right now. You can see that this is about 21 arc pixels, uh, arc pixels, pixels. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is, uh, I think, uh, the, as far as I can push my um, 80 millimeter refractor in combination with uh, my ZWO178. I have one more trick up my sleeve, and that is uh, I'm going to try to use the Barlow, the 2.5 Barlow. I just wanted to show you what happens when you introduce a Barlow lens. So, here I uh, selected the 2.5 uh, Barlow lens and my uh, resolution or my uh, arc seconds uh, per pixel, it went down to 0.4. So I have uh, for yeah, every pixel, I have about 0.4 uh, arc seconds for each of the pixels. In the live view that I have here in sharp cap of Venus, so when we zoom in all the way, uh, let's see, let, can we take 800? <laughs> ah, here it is. So now you can see that um, the diameter, basically, when you look at the, look at the pixels, you have about yeah, 50 uh, uh, pixels in diameter instead of about 20 uh, to 25 pixels in diameter as we had before. I'm going to take a couple of uh, videos here and I will stack them using Registex. And uh, yeah, let's see what I can come up with.
So hi folks, I also quickly wanted to share my results on the Whirlpool Galaxy and unfortunately I forgot to take any live videos during the capturing session. Um, but just to show you what I ended up with. So I have here my uh, Sequence Generator Pro session. So basically I just uh, took the same camera where, uh, with which I captured Venus. So my zw ASI 178MC Cool. And I just aimed it at the Whirlpool Galaxy and I took uh, 30 second exposures. And you, as you can see here, I, I just uh, let it uh, run all night and I ended up with about uh, 796 frames here. Uh, and I used my light pollution suppression filter, which is the UTEC IDS D2 basically. So I ended up here with, in sequence here, of a, uh, in PixInsight you can see here uh, what an individual frame uh, looks like. So you can see already here that I'm dealing with some M glow in the bottom and the corners of the picture. And also I'm dealing with a lot of light pollution. And you can just barely see the Whirlpool Galaxy here in this single frame. So uh, what I did, I made uh, two stacks basically. The first stack is just all the pictures that I found acceptable uh, and that I could stack in uh, PixInsight basically. So after the star alignment process it looked like this and this is before the automatic background extraction so you, I just wanted to show you also what kind of light pollution I'm dealing with uh, so you get these nice brownish looking pictures of your color camera in uh, PixInsight when you live in the city and um, so yeah this is uh, two and a half hours stacked basically so I threw away about half of the frames either due to uh, yeah, like a high eccentricity in the stars, but uh, also sometimes PixInsight couldn't just uh, stack the, some of the frames. Um, and then I also uh, went to a second process. This is stack on the right here, which uh, only has one and, a, uh, one and a half hour of capturing data. Um, and you see that the stars are a little bit more pinpoint, a little bit uh, eccentric still, but uh, I went to the, through this uh, sub-selection uh, a process where I looked at the full width half maximum and uh, eccentricity and this is below a certain threshold but then um, oh yeah I did also some automatic background extraction to get rid of the uh, most of the uh, light pollution uh, uh, from the city basically and then I ended up with these two stacks of the Whirlpool Galaxy and I was just wondering whether or not you agree with me because here I just uh, took all the pictures I could stack together and I have here two and a half hours of uh, data. And you can see here that some of the structure of the Whirlpool Galaxy is already coming through after two and a half hours, uh, which I really like. And this is actually the process where I went through all of the, uh, nou ja, the calibration and the cosmetic corrections and the sub-selection of the frames. Um, but then uh, I, uh, I have one hour of data less in this picture as compared to the picture on the left. You can see then that uh, some of the structure of the galaxy is less visible actually. So I would say that um, yeah, my conclusion would be that stacking more, although those pictures are not perfect, it actually leads to um, uh, having more details in your object of interest, in this case the Whirlpool Galaxy. So yeah, anyway, I just also wanted to share this and uh, hope you like that. Um, that's all I got for now for this uh, week. So see you next time. Bye bye.